Welcome everybody to the video! I am Teching101 and today we will be discussing the captain of Squad 12, Mayuri Kurotsuchi Zanpakuto, Ashisogi Jizo! Yubashiri, but mostly Ashisogi Jizo! <laughs> okay, <laughs> man, I'm really out of practice at doing that. I could actually do a fairly decent Mayuri once I practice. I think there was one Bleach video where I had to, I was trying to do the perfection speech that he did against Sile, and I really hammered in the voice, but it's, I'm a little bit out of practice. I think I can remember part of it. It goes like, you know, I have to tell you the honest truth as I see it. I despise perfection. If something is truly perfect, that's it. The bottom line becomes, there is no room for ability or development or improvement. You know, so it goes something along those lines like that, but yeah, it really kills my throat. So, Mayori Kuratsuchi, though, he is my favorite captain, and he's probably uh, Kubo's as well, because check it out, he cosplayed as the dude right after Bleach ended. He chooses anybody to cosplay as, in his series, he chooses Mayori. That's a boss move right there. Now, why is Mayuri so popular? Why do I like him? Well, it's certainly not because of his actions, because he is... I mean, you could probably tell just by looking at his face, but he is one messed up mamma jamma. Like, seriously, he, um, like, what, what was he done? Well, you know, wiped out an entire tribe of people, you know, the Quincy's. I mean, he didn't personally wipe out every single one of them. If he would have done that, there wouldn't have been a final arc. But no, like, there were a few of the Quincy's that didn't go to the Silburn, like, to the Shadow Realm with Yuha and everybody, you know, there were a few Quincy's that stayed in the world living through the centuries ever since Yuha's reign, like a thousand years ago or something. So, like, you know, Soken's family, Masaki's family, the Kurosaki's were Quincy's as well, and then they all died off, and then Masaki had to go to live with the Ishidas and everything. So, there were Quincy's that still lived that were just, like, struggling to keep their traditions and their culture alive, and Mayuri was the one that basically wiped out those, like, that small tribe of Quincy's. It was something like, he gives a number it was like an insane number, like over 2,000 Quincy's that he dissected or, or vivisected. Eh, dissection, vivisection, you know, it's all the same once the anesthesia takes hold, if I choose to use any anesthesia. Anyway, Akon, prep the table. So, um, yeah, he's not a good person at all, but just the, first off, his aesthetic, he looks interesting. Uh, Kubo just has a field day with this guy. He changes his outfit multiple times throughout the entire story. Uh, um, he has this initial outfit during the Soul Society arc. He has, like, that sideways extendy hat, uh, which seems like would make very difficult to walk through doors. He has, like, that purple, like, it looks like a travel pillow. Like, one of those things, like, you go on the plane and you'll be like, uh, you know, trying to sleep on that. And then in the Wake of Mundo arc, he adopts, like, the Egyptian pharaoh kind of aesthetic. Um, he changes outfits not once, not twice, but three times during the final arc. Um, the first time we see him in the very first chapter of the Thousand Year Blood War arc, he's in the, uh, the lab, the research and development division, and he's wearing this giant golden ornate headdress that is so massive it actually covers up the captain's symbol on his Hayori. So he has to paint the symbol of the 12th division on the headdress itself. It looks like it's like a hundred pounds and he can't even like move his neck when this thing is attached to it. It's like, Akon, bring me the reports! Akon's like, yes sir, right here. Just turn your head. I... I cannot, I'm sorry. And he points like, okay, sir, here you go. Ah, these look above par. Thank you, Akon. You know, so, yeah, that, that doesn't seem very practical for battle. Later on, when he figures out that the Quincy's power has something to do with shadow, he completely remodels his lab to have all these little light panels, and so there's no shadows that can exist in his lab, and he wears this light armor. Not light armor in the sense that it's light, you can move around. It's actually rather bulky. It looks rather squishy, if we're being honest, and it just, uh, it's like constantly luminescent and he can control the level of luminescence, and I guess he figured, like, you know, well, if the Quincy's are using shadow, well, let's try to mitigate as many shadows as possible. Nemu also wore a similar, you know, low-cut, cleavage-revealing, top-hatted outfit, which he did not wear more, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, that was cool. And then, during the epilogue of the Thousand Year Blood War, like, the ten years later, he's wearing, like, a demon outfit. Like, he has, like, devil horns sticking out of him. So, Kubo just has a lot of fun just redesigning Mayori as much as he can possibly do it, you know? So, that's, that's pretty cool, right? But anyway, I'm going on and on about that. I could do a whole video just based on Mayuri's, you know, fashion choices, but he looks cool, and while he might be sadistic and everything, uh, his fights are 
easily one of the most interesting, like, things about Bleach, you know? Like, because Mayuri does, I mean, it's always good to see Kenpachi Zaraki just walk up to somebody and, like, them going on about their powers and Kenpachi just takes out Nozarashi and just slices them in half and just like, freaking boring! But, you know, that's good, but it's also really nice to see the exact opposite of that, a much more methodical kind of battle, you know? And it's like uh, the resident ma mad scientist, okay? So when he goes up some against somebody like Sile or Pernida during the final arc, there's really this sense of, like, he's not just trying to kill it, he's trying to figure out what it is, what its ability does, how to counteract the ability, how to kind of stick it to him, because that's what Mayuri kind of specializes in, sticking it to things. It's just like, ah, you can control the nerves, I see. Well, all I have to do is remodel the nervous system in my body. What, you don't think I could do it? I'm Mayuri Kurotsuchi! I could do anything! And so it's more about, you know, like, oh yeah, I figured out your ability, bro. I figured it out, I figured out the perfect way to counteract it, and now I'm gonna make you suffer as I slowly torture you and but I'm not gonna let you die I'm gonna like knock you unconscious cart you back to my laboratory pop you into a freaking fish tank and study you until I get bored and then I just flush you down the toilet basically that's Mayori all right so very sadistic but the fights are rather amusing to, to watch and read the Pernita fight is probably the one part of the thousand year blood Warwick I've reread at least four or five times um it's a really interesting fight so, his, his Zompak Toe, though, we could go on and on about Mayori, but let's just get into the Zompak Toe discussion, okay. So, as he is the mad scientist, um, he's also experimented on, um, among other things, including his daughter, um, his Zompak Toe. So, whatever Ashisogi Jizo's, like, original base form was, I'm not really sure. Like, I'm sure the Shikai always looked similar, but he's always modifying it. He's always changing it and screwing around with it. I really wish we would have learned more about that, um, you know, more about Mayori studying it, because you can, you can look at a Zonpak Toe, and this is not a Zonpak Toe, this is Yubashiri, but you could look at a Zonpak Toe and you could just say, it's a magic sword that transforms and does things, you know, like Yorimaru is a magic ice sword, you know, and then later on we start figuring out, you know, what Zonpak Toes really are and everything, but Mayori is somebody that's like, you know, that explanation isn't good enough, he's like, it's a magic sword that uses my own soul, now I need to figure out exactly what this is so I can tinker with it. And for that reason, when we see his Zonpakuto spirit, uh, Ashisoki Jizo takes the appearance of, like, a little baby butterfly toddler kind of character. It can barely speak except for just random noises, like little baby noises and stuff. And that makes you think, like, the thing is traumatized from how many times Mayori has been screwing around with it. You know, like, it's been removing parts and adding things and changing things around, and it's, it's probably just really traumatized. Like, I can't even talk anymore. I've lost all sense of identity. Certainly not somebody that, I mean, it's very possible that he might have, like, forced his way into his Bankai. Because I don't see Mayori as the kind of guy that does, like, the Jin Zen thing. Like, sits down and, like, Ashisoki, Ashisoki Jizo, I will now communicate with your presence. No, it was actually stated one of the prototypes for Nemu, I believe it was the fourth prototype, because Nemu is the seventh. The fourth version of Nemuri um, uh, actually led to the development of Mayori's Bankai. So that makes you think, like, he didn't really connect with his sword. Rather, he figured out how to, like, internally, like, forcibly alter aspects of the Zonpak Toe spirit and of his inner world and things. Oh, God, can you imagine Mayori's inner world? It would be just, like nothing but just, like, a sea of, like, just constantly raining blood and, like, hooks everywhere. It'd be out of, like, a Saw movie, you know? Just, like, random, like, torture devices all over the place and, like, medical equipment everywhere, you know? And it just, like, it smells like the inside of a hospital and just be like, oh, what the hell is this place? You know? Like, but, yeah, it, it makes it think, like, he studied uh, the, the, the technology to try to create an artificial Shinigami, Nemu, and in the fourth one, it, it managed to develop to the fetus stage, and so he used that technology to throw it into his sword and forcibly trigger a Bankai, and that's why his Bankai looks like a baby, you know, like, or a fetus, so to speak, uh, and a caterpillar, um, you know, like, yeah, and a, and a giant sumo wrestler, yeah, he's done a lot of crazy stuff with it, right, so that's one thing right there, like, everything involving, and it still works, that's the thing, he still became a captain, he still is a great fighter, you know, it's entirely possible, like, the original function of Ashisoki Jizo 
with something just a lot more simple. Still poison related, but something like, you know, Ashi Soki Jizo's true power is that it emits a poison that disorientates its, its opponents, and Mayori's like, that's boring! I have an idea! Let's modify it so that it uh, renders the opponent immobile, but they can still feel pain. That would be the fun part, you know, and so he modifies it and changes around the poison and how it operates and everything to that level, right? So the release command of Ashisogi Jizo is claw out Ashisogi Jizo. And when it does that, it has a very ornate um, Shikai release. Uh, the bottom of the sword basically just turns into a baby face and then a little bunch of like a uh, spike kind of patterns jut out of its head and then those function as the sword so it's it's something that looks like a torture device and that makes sense given Mayori's aesthetic so how it works is there's poison constantly spewing out of the mouth he can choose that uh, and also emitting from the blade so anything it cuts will also immobilize the target as I said it will immobilize them but it will not paralyze them in the sense of like uh, their nervous system and their pain receptors receptors so they could still feel pain they just can't move and so Mayori can just hold them down and crush them or repeatedly stab them more with Ashisogi Jizo and just he gets off on the pain you know like yes feel the pain you know so that's that with that later on uh, during the final arc because it, he doesn't really tend to use his Shikai all that often we're being honest um, he uses against Uryu um, he jumps right to the Bankai against Sile and uh, Pernida he uses it again but yeah most of the time we don't usually get to see it in fact when he uses it against um I think he I think he also uses it in the fight against uh, Toshiro when Toshiro is a zombie. But in that form, it looked like it didn't actually change to the Shikai, like it actually went golden. It seemed more like uh, it was just like the spirit of Ashisogi Jizo, like the spirit of the baby face appeared, like it didn't actually transform. So he's he's constantly screwing around with it. So it, it, it nothing's really consistent with Mayori's sword. Usually every time he uses it, goes into Shikai or Bankai, there's a little bit different of how it looks. You know, whether it be overt or it's just its abilities. He's always tinkering around with it, right? So he uses his Bankai. Actually, he's the first person to reveal Bankai in the entire story. Uh, this is actually right after Yoroichi explains the concept to Ichigo. We cut over to Uryu and Mayori's fight, and then he uses it after he goes into his let's steal his final form and just blasts a hole and like, rips off Mayori's arm. He's like, ah, if that's the way you want it, I'll return the favor and attack with equal power. Bankai! And it goes into Konjiki Ashisogi Jizo, which is a giant baby face with the body of a caterpillar, which a bunch of baby arms as the legs. And um, the most frightening thing about it, though, aside from its appearance, because I would rather drop my fudge at this thing, um, is the ability of, uh, you know, the poisoning. It just gets amped up. So it's now spewing poison from its mouth. It's an organic life form. It really is. It's a living thing that he summons, not unlike uh, Komomura's Bankai, a little bit different than Kokujo Tengen Myo Dongaijo, but um, it's still like an organic thing, right? So it can spew poison all over the place and the entire battlefield affecting friend and foe alike so he doesn't really care at that point as long as he takes down whoever he's trying to take down so Uryu though in his let's steal this is kind of a weird first outing for a Bankai because this is supposed to be like you know the strongest a Shinigami could possibly attain a Bankai and he goes into it and it's the first time we're seeing it as an audience holy crap that's a Bankai and Uryu just <laughs> slices it in half with one arrow and it gets destroyed and we're sitting there like oh well that that kind of huh you know like okay i, I hope ichigo's is a little cooler than that because otherwise that's going to be kind of lame but the let's steal form as we're also aware is wicked strong as well it's like the quincy equivalent to a bonkai so it's like a bonkai versus a bonkai there right and of course the drawbacks for the quincy let's steal are immense right so th i guess that makes sense but still it's kind of disconcerting so uh the next time we see his bonkai is his fight with sile and sile is great because he's a scientist as well and Mayori sees him and he's kind of just like, ah, so you're a scientist. Well, I'm a better scientist, kind of. So it's like uh, Sile had those little, uh, his Resurrection had those little voodoo dolls where he can like crush your organs. And he does that against Mayori and he's screwing around with them like, oh, oh, you crushed my liver. Oh, now my kidney. Oh, my spleen. Oh, what am I going to do? And then he's just like, I got you. So he revealed like, oh, all I had to do was replace all of my organs with dummy organs. 
And Sile is like, that's impossible! It's only been an hour since I've shown that ability! It's impossible! And he's like, ah, eh, maybe for you it is. So that's the thing about Mayuri. Think about that. Think about that. Before rocking out to Huecomundo, he, like either did it himself or made Nemu do it, like, slice himself stem to stern. Maybe he has a little door. Maybe it's not even like he needs to rip himself open anymore. He just takes off all of his clothes and he just has, like, a door, like a zipper that just zip and then just opens up and all of his organs are in there. And he's like, okay, Nemu, let's get going. We have to be at Hueco Mundo in an hour to save the Quincy. Let's see, uh, lung, lung, liver, 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 dummy lung, dummy liver, dummy heart. Okay, we're good. Zip, let's go. <laughs> like... Like, what the? What about his brain? What if, what if Sile took out the brain in the little jar? I don't think he did, but what if he took out the brain and shattered that? Could he replace it with, ah, you see, I've always, I've already programmed my brain to respond wirelessly. My brain is in a jar back in the Soul Society, and it's sending out waves, and there's an antenna in my head. You know, you fool, you cannot hope to rival Mayori Kurotsuchi. And this is also why he's always in a constant rivalry with Uohara, because Uohara is the exact same thing with him, but he's a little bit more just trolly about it. Or Uohara, like, he's like, yeah, Mayori's a great scientist. I'm a better one, though. So they always have their little back and forth there, which is hilarious, right? So against Sile, uh, he actually just orders, uh, he just summons his Bonkai and has it eat him. Which, I mean, easy. When your Bonkai looks like this, I mean, why wouldn't that be your go-to? It's just like, summon a giant baby head and just have it devour the enemy. Prom problem solved! Let's go get Chick-fil-A! You know, like, so they're done. But of course, Sile and his Resurrexio managed to invade his Bonkai and eventually Nemu and do the whole Phoenix rebirth impregnation thing, which was disgusting. It was a lot more grotesque in the manga because you actually see, like, Nemu's stomach, like, swelling and then he's, like, explodes out of it, like... <laughs> In the, in the anime, it's toned down significantly where Nemu just kind of coughs up a pink cloud and Sile comes out of that, which I think it's fair to get that past the censors. Much of Mayori's fights would be censored if that was the case, right? So, um, and, and on top of being reborn, he also controls his Bankai now because it's like it ate his body, so it's invading that. But Mayori counters that by just blowing it up. So he rigged his Bankai to explode if it ever attacked him or it was ever used against him. Also, rather cruel way to treat your sword, um, but practical in a battle. He's somebody like Urahara. He thinks of all these different possibilities. He's like, what happens if someone invades my Bankai and uses it against me? Well, I'll just rig it to explode. Like, okay, problem solved. Let's go get Orange Julius. And I'm like... So that's how he does things, right? But my favorite fight that he was in was the fight with Pernida. And I'm glad he got two fights during the final arc. He had that little scuffle with Zombie Toshiro. Also, I guess I should mention it at this point. Uh, one of the modifications he did to his sword was he installed a sensor in, like, the hilt of his blade. So you got, like, you know, the hilt, then the guard, then the blade itself, right? So what he basically did was install a sensor right here so that whenever someone goes to attack him with another sword, this sensor will automatically automatically adjust the angle of the blade to parry it. So let's say Mayori is like at this angle and the sword, you know, somebody's coming up to slash him like this, the blade will automatically adjust like ching and then block it or he's going to swing it or if someone's just like raiding on blades on him, you know, he could just like shing 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 it's like adjusting automatically. So that's really cool. That's like, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a laboratory recluse. I'm not really, you know, training in the art of the sword. So how can I keep up with you, Toshiro? Well, I installed a sensor. That's what he does. He like he plays to his his strengths. He's like, you know, I'm not really uh he's not really a physical brawler. He's not a fighter with like giant muscles that attacks people and he's not going to study like Swordsmanship is not something he really is interested in. He's You don't see Mayori in the training hall practicing kendo. So he's like, how can he cheat the system? He's like, well, I'll just, you know, modify my sword so it, it fights for me, basically. There you go. But his fight with Pernida is great, okay, because... It takes it takes a lot to surprise Mayori. It takes a lot to really get him caught with his pants down. He's the kind of guy that always has gadgets. You know, no matter what situation he finds himself in, he has an entire array of objects and little trinkets that he pulls out, little inventions um, that he can just use to block attacks or mitigate damage or attack the enemy, okay? So Pernida shows up, and it's just a hand. And he's like, ah, it might be the left hand of the Soul King. Completely unfazed by the fact it's a giant hand with eyeballs staring at him. He's just 
completely scientific. He's like, ah, this must be a new undiscovered species. And Pernida launches its nerves at him and he just takes out this liquid he's got, like this preserving fluid. And he's just like, ah, back off. And he just throws the liquid and it hits the nerves and the nerves are like, Kee! and Pernida's like, ah. And he just like, it's like basically like acid hitting your nerves, like your raw nerves. And he's just like, ah, whatever. He shoots it out again. He has this little umbrella that blocks the attack. He has the Hiren Kyaku jet butsu that fly him around and stuff. He's like, he's like, see, super prepared. I love it. He's just like, even if it gets like an arm blown off, he has that hojikuzai, which is like the flesh mending drug. He's like, oh, you blew off my arm? Just, there you go. So it's... I just love it, you know, it's 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 a fight basically of, uh, you know, attrition, where it's like, who's gonna run out of tricks first? You know, where you have Pernida here, who is the left hand of the Soul King that can shoot out its nerves, and no matter how much damage you do to it, it always seems to just replicate and make clones of itself. Even if you blow the thing to Kingdom Come, all the little pieces will just make more Pernidas. And on top of that, its intelligence is slowly increasing. It seems to respond to whoever it's fighting. So, when it's, when it's fighting against Zoraki, it kind of gets up to Zoraki's level talking like a barbarian but it's talk it, it's fighting Mayori after that and that's like the worst opponent because when you're fighting Mayori it's like its intelligence is slowly rising getting to the point of condescension and like sarcasm that Mayori has right and so uh Nemu and Mayori team up to try to take it down and they try to inject this like nerve like freezing agent into it that like, like gunks up its nerves so the whole thing just freezes but it's aware of that and lops off its thumb and then Nemu tries to destroy it and then it you know re returns all, all of its little clones pop up and then stab and destroy Nemu. And then finally, the thing that renders it useless is basically, once again, just coming back to Mayori's own sadistic nature on experimenting on his own daughter is he modified, of course, Nemu's body with having a bunch of crazy drugs and stuff inside of it. So when Pernida kills Nemu and laps up her corpse, uh, it has, like, basically it gets cancer. <laughs> it, it gets, like, a special... There's, like a, like, a thing in its pituitary gland uh, in Nemu's body that would constantly, like, replicate cells, and there was something else that it had in the brain to kind of stop the cells from replicating, but Pernida's just eating that part. So the cells of Pernida just start replicating like crazy in the whole body. He just explodes and that's how Pernida dies so Mayori ended up winning but not really because as he's walking away his knees get screwed over because the nerves are still there and just you know like the last laugh of Pernida and he just collapses in a pool of his own blood and Nemu's dead and he's holding on to her brain and just like oh I still won but oh boy I'm I'm out of I'm out of tricks, you know. Like so, I, I, I and tricks are for kids. So um, that was kind of a humbling moment, I think, for Mayori, where he had to, you know, the like uh, Ikaku and Yumachika show up, and they're like, "We have to help you." And Mayori's like, "Ah, get out of here!" But then he like sees the kind of shit situation he's in right now, and he's like, "Ah, well." All right, here's what you do. Step one, get those healing pods and chuck me in one. I, I guess you could throw Zaraki in the other one, you know, and just let me heal up. And that's the last time we see him during the final battle. He's just healing inside of the tank. Uh, we see him during the epilogue with uh, Namuri Hachigo, who is Nemu's successor. So she managed to live on little chibi Nemu. I, I, I preferred grown-up Nemu myself. <laughs> but anyway, no, um, so yeah, he's back, and he's fine, and he's okay, and he's still continue. the, the experiments must go on, um, but during the final arc about with Hashisogi Jizo, his last modification was he did the demon womb wrapped in disease, which was the one where he turned Ashisoki Jizo into a giant fat baby, uh, sumo wrestler kind of dude, with lanterns on its head, so in case it ever needs to, like, let people know that it's parallel parking, like, tick, 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 uh, but anyway, yeah, and then the, the whole deal with this is it can analyze an opponent's techniques on the spot and then copy it and then create a perfect counter for that and then... Of course, how it works is, well, obviously, the giant belly of the sumo baby rips open and then a new Ashisogi Jizo squirms its way out of that. 
Obviously! What other way could it possibly work? And so in Pernita's case, Pernita fights using nerves, you know, shooting out nerves and controlling people by, like, hacking into their body. So this Ashisogi Jizo that gets created has, like, 70,000 different skin layers, each with nerves, and so whenever a nerve hits it, it just peels off. Now, this ended up backfiring against Mayuri because Pernita copied that ability. It copied the ability that was meant to counter its ability to use against Mayuri, so it could shed its own skin, and so it could be immune to Mayuri's attacks. So, you know, that that's 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 why that fight is so good. It's just, like, one is a mad scientist genius that has, like, a hundred tricks up his sleeve at the ready to go at any given time, and this other one is the left hand of the Soul King that starts off stupid, not even capable of speech, but is learning as it goes, and it's like, which one's gonna last longer? You know, like, Mayuri's tricks, or is Pernita gonna get to the point where it's smarter than Mayuri and then take him out? So that's that's why I love that fight. But yeah, um, just because it's it's always a modified sword and it, it changes every time we see it. Like there's always something new. Like once again, during the final battle against Pernita, uh, you had uh, Ashisogi Jizo Fear Force 4 or something where Mayuri goes Shikai, stabs Zoraki with it, takes his thumb and pierces the eye socket of the baby face and the baby screams. And anybody that hears that scream for longer than four seconds, um, except for Mayuri and Nemu, because they're immune to it, will be rendered, like, per paralyzed. And it happened to Hanatro. Hanatro hears it, and he's like... <sighs> he starts foaming at the mouth and, like, is paralyzed on the ground. So, it's like, he's all... I wonder what Fear Force, you know, 1, 2, and 3 were. Or maybe he only called it Fear Force 4 because it's four seconds, you know. Oh, man, it's... It's crazy. We probably didn't get to see half of all the crazy nonsense he modified his sword. It makes me feel really bad for Ashisogi Jizo. It really does. Ah, oh, man. I feel like doing a whole video on Mayuri now. I really do. Like, I, like not even Zanpakuto related. Just, like, going back and just, like, doing just a whole video on Mayuri just because. Right? So, I still might do that. Who knows? I don't know. All of his little gadgets and things he had and his inventions. Man, he's crazy. Um, okay. So, that that's that's Mayuri's video, though. I'm, I'm proud with that one. Yes. I managed to use the voice a few times. And, uh, it's always good when I get to paint my, paint my face and freaking and what, like the UPS or the FedEx guy shows up at my door and I answer it and I'm just like, Hi, how you doing, sir? Ah, you need me to sign for that package? Thank you very much! And then he just runs away and I probably don't get anything delivered to my house for quite a while. Uh, but anyway, uh, so... How many do we have left? We have uno, dos, tres. We have three left. Okay, so we got uh, Hyorin Maru, we got Simbon Zakura, and we got Suzumushi. So who are we getting? I kind of want Suzumushi to be next, to be honest with you. Um, because that one's kind of the most, like, I mean, it's cool. I, I, if, if I had to choose, I would go Suzumushi, Hyori Maru, and just end it out with Zenbone Zakura. Just have Zenbone Zakura be the last one, because it's the most interesting out of the remaining ones. I'm not a huge fan of Hyori Maru. Um, I shuffled it pretty good because there's only three, so I want to really make sure I have no idea what it is. Alright, here we go. Whoopa! Ah, we got Squad 10, Hyori Maru. Okay, so that can still be Senbone Zakura last. We'll see what happens. But for next time, we'll be talking about a fan favorite character. And I can see why he's a fan favorite character. It's just I personally don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of Toshiro. But his Zanpakuto is cool. In more ways than one, and he did the... I, I will admit, alright, he goes into his adult, sexy, Bashonen form against Gerard, and he's doing, like, the four elements freeze, and, and that, that's pretty damn cool. It, it's, it's awesome. It was an awesome scene. I'm not gonna deny it. I think he looks a lot better as an adult than a child. Kinda sucks he went into adult form and then regressed back into a child again by the end of the series anyway, so it's like, oh you kubo but um all right so next time we'll be dealing with that i hope you enjoyed and uh you know keep an eye out i might still do the mayori video teching 101 signing out